Hello and welcome. In this video we'll be taking a look at VSN's YF12A Mod 4 DCS. Now I'm going to switch things up a bit in this video. I'm obviously going to do the review of the mod, but I'm also going to do a history lesson. Um, so I'm going to take it right back to the origins uh, of the YF12, which is obviously the A12, um, the Oxcart program. Now back in December 1957, Lockheed actually uh, started designing a subsonic stealth aircraft um, under the name of Project Gusto, and it wasn't until uh, April 1958 that Kelly Johnson made his first notes on a Mach 3 aircraft, um, was to be initially called the U-3, um, but this uh, evolved into the Archangel 1, um, hence the A designation and this was put up against uh, Converse Fish, this standing for First Invisible Super Hustler. Now after much to and froing by the land panel on who they um, would rather um, favour, Convair or Lockheed, um, it finally fell to the uh, 812 and Convair's now Kingfish and with that Project Gusto came to a conclusion and on the 26th of January 1960 the CIA formally placed an order for 12 A-12 aircraft. 26th of April 1962 was the big day. First flight of the A-12 from Groom Lake. Um, but that was not entirely true because the previous day um, it um, being a, uh, a tradition of Lockheed um, to uh, have an unofficial uh, unannounced first flight the day prior, so the, the real first flight was the 25th of April 1962. The next big step came in October 1962 when the A-12s first flew with the mighty J-58 engines. On the 17th of December 1962, uh, after delivering the um, fifth A-12 airframe to Groom Lake, the Air Force um, expressed an interest in um, obtaining a reconnaissance version of the A-12 for themselves. Um, so on the 28th of December 1962, uh, Lockheed signs a contract to build six SR-71 aircraft. So the SR-71 very much being in the um, beginnings early on, even in the Oxcart program. Um, but the thing is you have to remember that um, the difference between the A-12 and the SR-71 um, the major one being that the A-12 was a single seat, um, obviously surveillance aircraft, whereas the um, SR-71 uh, was a, a two crew uh, reconnaissance uh, platform. Then on the 20th of July 1963, um, they uh, reached their next uh, milestone in achieving their first Mach 3 flight. Now way back during December 1960, the separate project group working independently of the A-12 team under Russ Daniel was organised in the Skunk Works. From joint 715, a point perpendicular to where the inboard wing leading edge meets the fuselage join, the entire forward fuselage forebody of an A-12 was modified to create a Mach 3.2 interceptor. Originally designated AF-12, its 1,380-pound Hughes AN-ASG-18 Pulse Doppler radar and 818-pound GAR-9 missiles had been intended for the F-108 Rapier. And on the 7th of August 1963, Jim Easton climbed aboard the Interceptor prototype and took aircraft 606934, the 7th A-12 off the production line, for its first flight, a flight he would later modestly describe as a typical production test flight. Now as Oxcart grew in size and cost, um, there was a concern expressed within the, uh, both the CIA and Air Force as to how much longer the program could be kept a secret. So uh, President Johnson was briefed on the program in November 1963. So on the 29th of February 1964, a few hours prior to the President announcing the existence of part of the program, Two AF-12s 606934 and 606935 were flown from Groom Lake to Edwards Air Force Base, thus diverting any unwanted attention away from the Oxcart program. And so here it is, the said mod from VSN. Um, the, the model itself is brilliant, um, I think it's superb. 
it's a great representation of an, an SR-71 uh, not the YF-12 um, now there are some serious um, external differences to the YF-12 compared to the SR-71 now first three are under here uh, you have a, a fin under each nacelle at the back and a folding central fin um, that would fold out in flight. Uh, this was due to the stability issues when the ANASG-18 was installed into the um, the nose cone of the of the aircraft. Um, so to to calm the calm that down, they installed the fins at the rear end. And the next glaring um, change between the two is that the um, chines stop just here on either side and there is actually a normal radome nose comb on the, the YF-12 which contains the ANASG-18 um, so that's obviously not been modelled in either so what what is actually in front of us here is a fully tooled um, SR-71 obviously yes they have the the, the back crew member but that's uh, I believe it's an RSO in the SR-71 this is an FCO which is a fire control officer his job was to actually work the fire fire and control uh, look down shoot down radar um, taking the load off the pilot and um, yeah so I mean as I say it's a very good model uh, I do like the paint scheme um, but it's not an, a YF-12 um, but uh, a decent crack at it anyway um, but at least we can brag we've got a, an SR-71 DCS now um, obviously where the, um, the recce stations underneath here uh, one obviously there's four stations one's not used um, because obviously that houses more equipment for the fire and control radar and then you have uh, one on the left uh, I think it's one on the right hand side and two on the left hand side which house the um, AIM 47A um, Falcons or previously known as GAR 9s um, <coughs> now obviously there are no AIM 47s in DCS so they have been replaced with AIM 54 Phoenixes but swings and roundabouts um, what we have here is a fully um, made up airframe really but to be honest um, I like these mods uh, they they take the stress out of the sim uh, if you want something simple um, that will just satisfy your urge to go up fly shoot something down without all the um, you know, uh, firing up radars and aligning INSs and all this sort of stuff. You can jump straight into one of these and go and have some fun. Um, and with this, um, let me tell you, it's it it can reach Mach 3.2, I believe, or Mach 3.4. I've managed Mach 3.17 and got to 70,000 feet. This thing will not fly at Mach 3.4 or 3.2 at a thousand feet. Um, it's taken all of that into consideration. You have to go higher to achieve a higher Mach number. I mean, it's simple physics, but um, it's not one of those stupid mods where you can just, you know, slam the throttle to the gate and set the world alight. Um, you do have to. Um, put the effort in to get the speed out and also climbing to 70,000 feet took me forever um, I was climbing at like a 5 degree angle of attack nose up and it it literally took me ages to get to 70,000 feet so um, if you do plan on trying to uh, set some records for yourself um, be prepared to um, yeah put in some effort. Uh, you only get the one 
one uh, livery. Uh, there were three aircraft, um, and they weren't black with the the, the grey leading edges on the chines. Um, they were actually all over black. Um, but like I say, it's a good effort. It's a bit of fun, and um, for those of you that don't like the Flaming Cliffs 3 mods, well, I mean, that, that's entirely up to you, but at the end of the day, um, some of us like to have a little bit of fun uh, to take the seriousness out of it, um, and that's what Flaming Cliffs 3 does best, quite frankly. I mean, if, I'm, if I've been flying a, an F-18 or an F-16, and I just I can't be hassled with all the the checks and the the firing systems up and all that sort of stuff and getting into one of these and just shooting something down is a lovely way of um you know just taking the load out so um down here is the aim fifty fours as you can see you can have smoke pods um which I've not bothered to attach but don't know if it actually does anything externally. No. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got the three uh, phoenixes in the bays. Uh, I've got a uh, backfire out uh, uh, over the Black Sea, waiting to be shot down. So I'm going to jump in the cockpit, take off, shoot that down, and then do a uh, a proper SR-71 um, join the circuit and come into land. Uh, which, um, if anyone's interested at all, um, the two um, bits of um, literature that I'm using f to make this video is uh, Combat Legend SR-71 Blackbird by Paul Crickmore, and the other one um, is, let me just grab it, is the um, Flying the SR-71 Blackbird in the Cockpit on a Secret Operational Mission by Colonel Richard H. Graham, United States Air Force Retired. Had the pleasure of meeting this guy. Um, went to Duxford one day, went into the American Air Museum, and there he was. Uh, had a table in front of him, had some books in front of him, and he was just there for a chat. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I um, I didn't have much money on me, but the money I did have had enough to buy this copy of the book, and he was kind enough to sign it for me, and um, we had a nice little chat. Um, so yeah, uh, if you've ever met him, uh, you'll know how, how nice of a guy he is, married to an English woman, stayed over here after he retired from the Air Force. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll be taking a little bit of that on um, joining the circuit and then coming into land, um, just to make it a little bit more serious for those people who want, want that sort of thing. So let's jump in the cockpit. So here we are on the ramp at Kobaletti, and uh, none of the systems or engines have been started. Obviously the canopies are open, and uh, we just have a quick walk around, so um, looking at the nose first. Uh, as you can see the guys in the guys inside are actually wearing their pressure suits, um, which is a nice little uh, addition. Uh, the, uh, I'm not sure if the um, aluminium powdered tyres were part of the A12, uh, well, I don't know if they were part of the A12 program or the YF12 program, um, certainly the SR71 program, so I would have thought the um, the walls of the back tyres would have been uh, a grey silver colour, um, but yeah, um, yeah, we've got all the bits that should be there and I'm not sure if the um, shot cones uh, move in and out uh, that's one thing I've not actually uh, had a look at yet and so yeah uh, that's the walk around and um, the next bit will be the off bit off putting part for some people uh, get ready for it it's an F-15 cockpit with no canopy representing uh, anything SR-71-ish, um, but again, as I say, this doesn't bother me, it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. So, um, some of the controls that you're going to need, uh, if we go into Adjust Controls, you will obviously need uh, your access commands um, and uh, 
um, I always have a zoom for the uh, inside the cockpit. Um, communications, uh, you'll want to change that to uh, backslash or OEM 102 for some reason on my computer. Uh, countermeasures, um, this thing has flash, uh, flash, uh, chaff and flares uh, for some unknown reason. Uh, the real things never, never did obviously because they didn't need them. Um, but yeah, this has uh, countermeasures. Flight controls, you're going to want to set your trims up. Uh, which are very twitchy in this, I will so, we'll say. So if you're trying to fine-tune um, your flight, you'll find that you'll be notching up and down quite a lot, um, unless you're using an axis for trim, which I don't even know if there is one. Let's have a look. Uh, no, there isn't one. So yeah, um, trim is a bit twitchy on the um, up and down axis, so... Um, just be warned on that because obviously with the um, the SR-71 flying at 8,000 feet uh, doing Mach 3.2, uh, 3.4 um, there are very fine margins between stable flight and instable flight so they did a lot of their flying on uh, trim when they were at uh, maximum altitude and speed so uh, I would have thought the trim might have been a little bit smoother in this, but maybe I'm asking too much. Um, uh, sensors, uh, you're going to want to well, zoom in, zoom out, doesn't do anything. You want a radar on, off, uh, pulse frequency, um, repeat, uh, range while scan and track while scan, and then um, obviously you're going to want to um, change the scan down, scan up. Um, don't believe I've managed to get let the azimuth working on it. Um, just the uh, up and down, uh, so you can change altitudes at which you're scanning at. Obviously, you can need target lock, and then uh, systems. Obviously, air brakes. Uh, you're going to want as uh, a drag chute on here. Obviously, um, it's an SR71. You want to set eject. Um, your flaps, uh, fuel dump, uh, if you land this thing heavy um, it doesn't like it, you'll end up uh, just stalling and falling out of the sky um, so dumping fuel is a necessity jets and fuel tanks, is I've taken these from the F-15 so just ignore some of these nose wheel steering, doesn't do anything refueling boom opens the uh, receptacle obviously tail hook that will open your um, missile bays and close them again uh, weapon jetson and obviously you're going to want a wheel brake for some reason my um, road pedal brakes don't work on this um, and then finally on weapons uh, there's no cannon so ignore that launch permission override forget that weapon change forget that so you're just going to want weapon release uh, so yeah those are the um, controls. So um, let's get this thing fired up. So right shift and Lima brings the power on. Right control Lima brings on the nav lights. Right alt Lima land, uh, landing lights. Right control and home. We'll get the right hand engine started. zero out the barometric altimeter using right shift and the plus minus keys and let's have a look are we yeah we're on fire now so uh, and then uh, right alt and home to get the left engine started
Like I say, I don't know if the AICS actually works, which is the air inlet control system, um, or whether they're just static, uh, but we'll see once we get up in the air. Obviously, it's exciting to have an SR-71 in DCS now, but Milviz will be releasing their um, their SR-71 for Microsoft Flight Simulator at some stage, uh, probably beginning of next year. Um, they've just pulled an SR-71 into their hangar for scanning, so development is underway on that one. Okay, so all engines running. Uh, left control, Charlie, bring the canopies down. I'm not sure if there's a repeat when we go on the external view. No. So there we are. We are all up and running. And we'll have a look at the exhaust petals. So hold the brake on. Pretty good brakes to be fair. So there you go have some afterburner effects and yeah some basic bits and pieces uh, just to show you the receptacle at the top okay I'm not sure if air to air refueling is um, possible I'm guessing it, it probably is um, but um, just to be aware that that might may not be a function and then tail hook obviously opens the bays so yeah one on the right hand side two on the left hand side so um, as you can see just about you can see the nose cone of the aim 54 there so let's finally get this thing out on the runway don't expect um, any sort of realism uh, it's going to have as you can see it looks like it's uh, strafing. Um, so yeah, the uh, nose steering is a bit iffy. But at the end of the day, uh, the only time you're really going to use it is to get to the to the runway. And I'll speed it up to the end of the runway. Okay, so finally at the end of the runway. Now, another thing that I needed to add uh, for the chines, where it stopped just um, prior to the uh, front of the windshield there, um, in the 90 degree cut, um, the infrared surgeon track was installed on either side from the ASG uh, 18. So, uh, even though uh, there was a 90 degree angle of um, cutting, it was for a reason. Um, so yeah, that housed the IRST. So, get this thing rolling. Breaks off. Very quiet in here. Now you don't want to pull up too sharply for takeoff. Um, I recommend just trimming back slightly and just let it take its course um, because you can tail strike quite easily in this aircraft so hell of a bumpy ride. Airfield one one Cobra ready clear to taxi to runway seven. And we're up. Okay, and now we can pull up. go hunting for a backfire. Actually while we're in this position there you go. There's the uh, phoenixes. Right, so we need to switch the radar on. Does it go out to about 80? 160 as I've done. And we want to set the uh, maximum altitude for scanning as 26,000 feet. 
and minimum zero. Let's see if we can find ourselves a backfire. Okay, finally got one locked up. Let's uh, open them doors. Okay, so I've got them on my nose. Fire one. Okay, so we'll track that and see how it goes. Okay, so we're going to try again, but this time I'm going to try and get behind the aircraft and uh, fire from behind. I've not had much luck with these AIM 54s, if I'm completely honest. Um, I mean, for an aircraft that this this fast with um, missiles that are supposed to have such a good range. Um, and speed, these things are just shocking. So, um, you know, like I say, we'll um, make some adjustments to this one. I've found firing um, when they're coming in hot, unsuccessful, and uh, obviously side on, as you've just seen, was unsuccessful too. So, we're going to try again. Obviously with a missile, its optimum uh, agility is when it's out of the burn. So now it should be at its uh, maximum um, capacity to be able to manoeuvre. Whilst in the burn it's uh, limited to a certain factor. So, let's see if this one works. And the speed is dropping quite quickly. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep tracking, keep tracking. Nope. Another, another fail there. Last missile. Eee, finally. Right, now that I've shot something down, I'm going to try and climb to as high as I possibly can, to do as fast as I possibly can, just to show you it can be done. Right, okay, so we'll take a northerly route, and we'll climb at 5 degrees, just there or thereabouts, and see how high we can get. Another thing, of course, this being an interceptor, these things pissed like racehorses when they sat on the ground for fully fueled. Um, so that meant that they had to tank not long after takeoff. So if you're if you've got an urgent situation, you need your interceptors up quickly. That's going to be a problem. As you can see, we are now doing um, Mac two point. Uh, 2.1 just there, that's the Mach number so keep an eye on that and we're at 55,000 feet 60,000 feet now I'm going to do a gentle turnaround obviously we're going to start losing fuel as, 
very soon. So a gentle turn to face south so that I can bring it back into Kobaletti. Another thing you have to get used to in this is the chines. Obviously flying an F-15 normally you have a bit, a bit of a better view than this. Okay, so then this is about as high as I'm going to get. slightly and get some speed up. Getting close. Sorry. So if we can push it a little bit further. I'm starting to lose fuel now as well. That fuel gauge stays max for quite a while. To obviously um the amount of fuel that actually is carried by the SR-71 which is obviously bigger than the tanks in an F-15 uh, uh, but you can see how quickly it's winding down so um, max 3.15 come on 1717 I had last time I want some fuel to get backwards 7.4 that'll do throttle back Okay, so we're approaching Kobaletti, and the standard procedure is for SR-71 anyway, as I've got in the book in front of me, is to um, enter the circuit at field elevation circuit height, which is usually around about 1,500 feet, um, and anywhere between uh, 350 and 275 knots. So, um, get down to 1,500 feet and throttle back to 350 knots we're doing 275 knots and what we're going to do is maintain 1500 until we turn base so um, I'm going to break in a second ok and we'll break into the circuit now maintain the height but we're going to throttle back down to 250 knots which is a safe retraction gear retraction speed to the downwind leg. Maintaining the speed, maintaining the altitude. Okay, leveling out now and retracting gear get ready for a huge drag gear is down and climbing that's not good ok so we maintain the altitude maintain 250 knots until we turn base and then we're going to um, reduce the speed down to 230 knots and start descending ok, so we're going to turn in now swallowing back Just sped up a little bit I completely balls this one up
30 knots, 40. Thirty. Now approach speed is usually around about 175 knots, so I'm going to fully pull back on the throttles, let it glide, okay, ever so slightly over. about 175 knots no, we're not, we're 180 knots okay and then on touchdown we want to be around about 155 knots so right back Okay, brakes on, drag shoot out, and there it is, oh, and now it's retracting. Okay, and now we're down. Uh, I know that wasn't perfect, but uh, that was taken out of the the book Flying the SR-71 Blackbird in the Cockpit on a Secret Operational Mission by Colonel Richard H. Graham, United States Air Force, retired. Fully recommend it. Okay, um, so... Um, so that yeah, that's the VSN YF-12A um, for DCS. Um, as I say, it's fully tooled SR-71. Nothing more, nothing less. Unless they're going to make some changes, which I very much doubt. Um, so if you've bothered to stay for this long, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope I've earned a subscription if you've not already subscribed. And um, as always. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one.